Guitar and Excel. Hallelujah. Introduction. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready. Ready. Because we're right on track. We're right on track. Who's the tiger? Which isn't good because I can see the train bearing down on us. Right on track. <laughs> and I don't trust bears. Unless they're teddy bears. Because, because teddy bears don't generally bear down on people like full-size bears. And trains. Unless possibly the teddy bear was made in China. A teddy bear? A teddy bear made in China. Step away from- So it's, it's best to pick up the pace, get off track, and on tempo. Get off the track! Hey, okay, I'm going! Good luck up there, Turbo! Which is difficult, especially when Phil keeps on saying, you're going off the rails. Okay, this is going off the rails. He's like, the rails are over here and you're way over there. Totally off the rails. One thing's have gone off the rails, okay? And it's like, whatever, Phil. You know, I don't care if I'm off the rails. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. Do you know why? Because I'm not a train. Because our show was going off the rails. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, join. I'm not a train, Phil. Done. Get there. Get there. I can go off the rails. Why? Because because I have freaking feet, Phil. Actually, I have four feet. Not metal wheels that only work when stuck to train rails. It's not about feet. I have freaking feet, Phil. Allowing me to go all over the place. Rails or no rails. Don't go off the rails. Like, what, what, why, why are you trying to call me a train, Phil? Why are you trying to call me a train? What are you trying to say? What? What are you trying to say, George? That I run on hot air? That my music sounds like a foghorn? You know, what? whatever, Phil. You know, if, if, if this organization's a train, then you're the caboose, Phil. You're the ugly, dilapidated, rusted, old, red, commie caboose that keeps slowing us down. What? Ah! Okay, maybe that was... Maybe that was a little over the top. Are you kidding me right now? But anyways, whatever, I don't care. I, I don't care about rails, that's the point. So let's, let's just play some guitar. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to practice with. Continuing on with our project, mapping out the notes of the C major scale and related modes to the fretboard, both in open position as well as across the fretboard, this time applying the concepts to a song, that song being Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, a very popular song. So if you're looking for resources about it, such as tablature, you should be able to find them on the internet fairly easily. You can also find different renditions of the song if you search, say, on YouTube for renditions of the song. One of the more confusing things about this particular song is that you'll probably find a whole lot of different renditions of the song, even from Leonard Cohen himself, because it looks to me like Leonard Cohen was kind of more of a poet uh, musician, so he liked to change the verses. So you might see different renditions that have different uh, verses within the song or different ordering of the verses in the song. But all of the verses basically fit into the same kind of musical structure. So once we learn that, then you can you can apply that concept to whatever version of the song you like best. So for example, if you look on, on YouTube, of course, you can find different versions of the song. Here's one uh, version. I think a lot of people are most familiar, including me, with the Shrek version of the song, because this is when I became most familiar with the song and really started to enjoy it most, partly because I, I thought the first Shrek movie was hilarious. I thought that was great. And I do like that rendition of the song because it's a little bit faster uh, in tempo of it. And so you can search for this by just, or, or find something similar to it by doing a YouTube search for something like Hallelujah Shrek version with the, with the lyrics in it. So if you get the lyrics in there as well, that might help you to pace once you learn the song to kind of get the tempo of it. And you can, of course, right click and loop the song so it doesn't go on to another song when it is done. And on YouTube, of course, you can also change the speed of the song. These are great tools to kind of practice the concepts uh, as we apply them to a particular song. Now, I'm not really trying to, to uh, uh, play the song as though it's a particular version. 
what I want to do is basically practice the mapping out of the notes on the fretboard as it applies, applies conceptually to a song, which we'll do by learning the song first in open position, mirroring kind of how we learned the fretboard, learning it in chord structure, and then we'll, and then I'm, we'll move up the fretboard and move into our other positions because we should be able to, to, of course, play the same songs in different positions along the fretboard. So, and this is what I think is really fun to do with basically once we get a general tune in our mind is to be able to map it out to mirror exactly the way it's been played. That's one skill. And that's a skill that I think is obviously in like classical music where the structure of the song is quite complex and to master the complexity of the song and play it exactly as it's given is a huge skill there. And then other types of playing when the melody is a little bit easier to play, I think you have a more more of a like a bluesy type of thing where you can make variations. And that's what I tend to like uh, to do. So well, I'd like to learn the basic structure of the song and then make variations of the song. How can we do that? Well, we can break the song down into its components. We can learn to play it on more than one place on the neck so that we can play it up and down the fretboard and then we can we can do more with the song. We can play uh, with the tune of the song. So that's gonna be the general idea of it. We'll learn it first. We'll start it here in open position, and then uh, we'll think of it in terms of breaking down the chord structures into the roots and learning it in open position as well as across the fretboard, which will take multiple presentations that will move the song across the fretboard, learning the root notes in each position across the fretboard and then converting those root notes across the fretboard uh, to the chords and then possibly try to try to meld those things to together. Another thing that is common to do that I like doing is mapping out uh, the notes into a power chord uh, positions uh, such as this, right? So now we're going to think about how we can map it out on the top two strings because then we can play them with power chords and that's like the easiest structure to play something and you don't have to worry about the third because you're basically eliminating the third and you're just playing the first and the fifth which means all the chords kind of work you're simplifying all the chords so this is something that to me used to be i think it was maybe more common when i was when i was growing up because because we didn't have all these like resources and to simplify the songs uh, a lot of times the way to, to people will seem to simplify the song is to convert the song into in essence power chords which are easier to play and because you don't have to worry about whether it's a major or a minor in essence that's how at least uh, i think of it so that's another way that we can kind of build it so that's going to be uh the what we'll end up doing now how we're going to do that is is first note that that when we look at different songs some songs seem to have a melody that is the main component that people remember about the song and other songs, they seem to we, we seem to remember the chord structure of the song. And this particular song, the thing we remember is usually not what is being sung in terms of the melody because that's pretty monotone. It's going to be the actual uh, chords that are going to be played. So most people, once they hear this kind of, that's what they tend to remember, which is the playing of the chords. So instead of focusing in on the melody, uh, what I'm what I'm going to do when we map things out across the fretboard is take the root of each of these chords and then map those out, map out just the root of them in the multiple positions. And and so we'll talk. And as we do that, we can kind of simplify the song playing just the root note. And that what could help us if we're learning to song to play the rhythm because instead of practicing the full uh, chord we can practice just playing the root of the chord right so we can practice playing and we could just practice possibly the rhythm uh, within that and then and then add the full chord to it so we'll map it out in that format as well all right so let's first just think about it in terms of of the the chords themselves and and so so I tried to try to map out uh, the chords here. So this is going to be the song which I put different colors. This is going to be the intro, 
then this is going to be verse 1 in yellow, and then this is the chorus, and then we've got verse 2, and then the chorus, verse 3, and then the chorus, and I'm going to stop there basically uh, for now in the song. This is going to be quite repetitious with regards to the guitar plan because the verses and the chorus, of course, will uh, repeat. Now, I would call the song as being in the key of C because we basically start and stop on the key of C. But you can also think of it as kind of like it moves to the mode of, of an A minor and then basically back to the C. And it does have one uh, deviation from the modes related to the C major where it's going to move to an, an E major. So if we just look at the chords of it, We've got the C here, and I've mapped him, mapped out the chords on the left-hand side. So here's uh, the C, here's the one, the one, three, five. So the one is in greens, the three is in red, and the fives are in yellow, mapped out on our fretboard, noting that this fretboard is showing the E string, the low E string on top. So the low E string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, upside down from some tablature that you might see but i think it's easier to see that way and then this is where our fingers are mapped out the c the e and then the c and then these two open positions are open and then it also has then this is going to be the the sixth chord of the c major which is going to be an an a minor so it's going to be played like this we're putting our fingers on the c the a uh, the E, this open is ringing out. We usually will mute the top string possibly with your thumb and then the bottom string ringing out. Then it, it has a uh, the four in it, which is an F, which you can think about playing as a bar chord like this. So that's like an E bar chord. And if you wanna play that in the more simplified mode, then you might remove this finger here and put it down here. And that's quite common and it works quite well in this song to play it just here this way a little bit easier to play and then we have the g so here's going to be uh, a g normally played like this sometimes in this song i like to shift up this way here's if i play the f like this and you shift it up this way you have your your f your i mean e major shaped uh, g up here right so sometimes I think that works quite well and sometimes it's easier to play. And then here's the one that's outside the song uh, scale a bit. And that's going to be the E major. So you would think it would be an E minor. But notice I, that, would, that would be the chord structure if we were in the key of C. But it deviates from that and it puts a major in here. And so a minor would look like this. The major is now picking up this uh, G sharp. Now, why does it do that? Because it basically seems to be leading back into this A, uh, A minor, and, and, and making that kind of like the tonic for that part of the song. So let me show you what I mean on the song side of things. Now, the other thing that's a little confusing with this song is you've got to get the, the tempo down. <laughs> something like that right which is kind of like a little bit of a shuffle pattern uh, so so once you hear the song a few times you can kind of get that down I would start off by just playing the down strokes every time you make a chord switch and then try to get then once you get the chord switches down try to get the shuffle pattern uh, in there and once you get that in your head then it's pretty it, it's pretty easy to do but it's hard to kind of get that in the in your head to start with but before we get there so we've got it goes from C to A C to A and then the first verse goes from so I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord so right now we're pretty solidly in the key of C and then it's a, but you don't really care. So notice usually from this here to here, I go to this G instead of this G, because I think it's just, there's the F instead of this F, instead of that G instead of this G. Care for music, do ya? And then it goes back to the C. 
So we're basically back to a C. It started and stopped on the C, so I feel like I'm strongly in C. We play a G as we convert into the next line. Well, it goes like this to an F, the fifth, and then it goes to the A minor, minor chord, uh, and then a major lift, the baffle king, and then it says composing. This is where you have that change. Let me map that out right here or show. So there's that E, you would think it would be an E minor, and then it resolves to the A minor. So at this point in time, that makes it kind of sound like we switched modes to me, right? So now my ear is kind of hearing this. We don't really think of this consciously, but I think the ear is basically saying, hey, we're in the key of A minor now, which is, which is just the same mode uh, or is the same mortal class as the C. And you can kind of see that in that when we moved to this, when we moved here, instead of just doing an E minor, we put this finger down, that's a common move, and that leads into the A, right? Because it's a half step away from the A. So that's our common move that we see basically a lot of the time, where if I have, for example, this, if I have this A minor and I wanna make it home, what do I do? I take the fifth of it, which is gonna be an E, that E would be an E minor in the key that I'm in, but I'm gonna convert it to an E major or even an E7, which will make it give it a pull back to the A. And so that's kind of what's happening here. So right here, it kind of feels like the song is in an A, and then it's gonna to have to convert back to the C, right? How does it do that? Then it goes into the hallelujah, which is an F, and then back to an A, and then it goes back to that F again. But then it goes to a C. So now we're back to the C and we're sandwiching the G in between, which sometimes some people write as a, as a G7, and then back to the, to the C. That gets our ear back into the key of C in my mind, right? right? So now we're back into the key of C. How did that happen? Because we transitioned back and forth from this A minor, the F in between, and then we went to the G. So if I'm trying to make the C the, the focal point again, if I'm trying to make it a destination, how would I do that? Well, the C up top, the fifth of the C is a G, and therefore I'm gonna make that G the leading, the leading chord, which is in the key, it's right there. If I wanna make it more leading, I could make it like a G7. So that's why you might say this, this song is in the key of C, but maybe it like switches modes to A minor, like at that point in the song where this E is leading into the A minor, and then it switches back basically to the key of C, and it has one note or one chord that's outside the formal chords of the song, most likely because it's trying to give that feeling of moving away from the key of C to, uh, to this A minor. That's, that's how I would basically uh, think of it. So now, now we, since we kind of have these, you might have these open chords down, what I'd like to do is first just kind of play it through in the open position, and then I'll show you how we're gonna map out like the roots over here, which I think will be useful as we map out the, the same song in different positions up, up the guitar. So if I was to learn the song, the first thing I might do as I sing through it and play through it along with the, the soundtrack is just to play the switches with a downstroke, uh, most likely with the meat of my thumb, kind of like the Bob Marley tactic, right? Just the downstroke. So, uh, so something like this. So I heard, well, it would go, here's the intro. Dun, dun, dun. I heard there was a secret chord. So now I'm right here. And then we're gonna say that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? And then it does a little switch. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor chord 
or the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composed a hallelujah. So you might not do that whole song, right? I would break it out from this bit. I would do that over and over again, right? So it'd be like, I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music. I did it this way instead of this way. Do ya, dun, and then just keep doing that over again. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really, and I'm gonna play the G this way, care for music, do ya, dun, dun, dun and then play this bit a bunch of the times. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. And that's why I play this F to this G. Or you could play this F to this G, fifth. Uh, the minor chord, or the minor fall, or minor chord, and the major lift, the baffled king composing. Hallelujah. I do that, right? Well, it goes like this. The fourth, the fifth, the minor chord, the major lift, the baffled king composing. Hallelujah. And then we've got the good old chorus. This is going to be switching back to the key of C now. And this is, of course, quite repetitive. So it's going to be going, I'm still on the A minor. Hallelujah. I'm going to an F, which I think is easiest to play like this. You could play it like this. Hallelujah. Back to the A. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to hang on this one. Ooh, it goes to that G, which is going to make the pull back to the C. Yeah. And now we're back home to the C. And then we can do this little... to start the new verse down here. And then this next verse, of course, is basically interchangeable in terms of the progression, but you gotta get the, the lyrics down uh, and how you're gonna fit it in. Sometimes you might use a slightly different wording. Again, I think Leonard Cohen himself used different wording as he played through the song, you know, so, well, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew ya Right, and then we go up here and then we can play the second bit down here She tied you to a kitchen chair She broke your throne and cut your hair I usually go up there, but cut your hair And from your lips she drew so this F, this E again, is outside the key, basically. Drew the hallelujah. So now I'm in the A minor. I kind of feel like I'm in A minor. And once again, we start the chorus. So now we're just going into the chorus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. back in the key of C. And now we're back into the next verse, which I'm going to say is going to be, well, maybe there's a God above. For me, all I've ever learned from love is how to shoot at somebody who outdrew ya. So now I'm on the second bit of that. And it, it's not a crime you'll hear tonight. It's not some pilgrim who claims to have seen the light. No, it's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Right, and then the final, that one's a little bit hard to squeeze in there because you have a little bit of the longer phrases. So you can word that, you can... You know, you might have different variations of but Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Ooh, yeah. 
And so once you have that, then you can kind of practice on the tempo of it and trying to get the tempo. Now with the pick, like I say with the pick, I like playing this with the tip, the pick, and then because then I can... I can kind of put, do different things with it to play with it, which is what I kind of want to do once I get the general idea down. So then to get the tempo down, this intro is probably the easiest thing to repeat. That's probably the thing that's in most people's mind. So it's this shuffle pattern. So dun, you could do it with just down strokes to start with maybe. That's just down strokes. Dun, 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 So I'm just going from C to A, and then you can throw an, an upstroke in there once you get the, the feel of it. So. Then when I when I if I was to use the pick when I actually play the song you might try to mute the pick a little bit you could try to move the pick up and you know get more of the meat of your finger on the strings to mute it so you're singing over it or try to mute the 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 strings with your palm over here that's kind of fun with this particular song because it seems like you can get loud when the singing is not there and then you can try to mute when you're trying to sing over it so you, so something like and then when you're trying to sing over it now you're you're over here you can you can apply the mute well i heard there was a secret chord that david played and it pleased the lord but you don't really care for music do you Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, minor chord, the major lift, baffled king compose, the hallelujah. And you can kind of get loud once I kind of mess that up, but you can kind of get, you can go from soft to basically loud uh, if you have the pick, and that's what I kind of like to, to play with uh, sometimes. And then again, once you have the, the the general concept down you can you can start to try to move along the fretboard for certain parts of the song right you can do different variations of the song uh, which we'll try to play with a little bit later right so once i have this idea down i heard there was a secret chord that david played and it pleased the lord but you don't really care for Now I'm in this G. Now I know that I can play that up the fretboard. So when I'm playing that up, all I'm doing is playing the different G's. Up the, just to give it, a, just to play with it a little bit, right? So then just end the break. So, uh, so you don't do you? It goes like this: the fourth, the fifth, the minor chord, the major lift, the baffled king. And then you can kind of put you can put some little fillers in there. You got you've got the the chorus, and then Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Right, you can kind of move it around. Uh, a little bit which we will work on by basically then applying this same concept and breaking out the roots now note again that a lot of a lot of songs they have a, a melody that really people remember but really people remember this song with the chords so let's break those chords down to their roots and and like i say in open position you probably know the chords so you might not this might not be as helpful in open position but if we do the same concept 
once we go into the next position up the guitar, mapping out the, the roots of the notes first, then we can, we can have something that we can play along with the song in different positions. If we were to listen to it, say, on a YouTube or be playing in a band, and then we can build each of those positions into a chord so that we can play those chords along as we're playing it. So for example, here, here's our fretboard, uh, and, and I'm, I've mapped out on the fretboard, all of the notes that are colored are in the key of C and related modes. So no matter what chord we're playing, if we were to embellish it with one of the notes that are colored, then we should be okay. And we're, we see that the C chord is what is basically we're mapping out here with the root being in green, the red being the third, and then the yellow being uh, the fifth. So, and so then, so that's gonna be the general idea. Now, if I was to play this as though it was like a melody from a tab standpoint, we're gonna say that I'm gonna start, I'm gonna, so we can practice playing the roots of the chords of the song and practice our changes. I have the words up top. So I heard there was a secret chord and this is gonna be then what we're gonna play starting with the green, which is going to be on fret zero of the A string, or you could just find the green one up top, which is going to be an A because it's fret zero of the A string. Then it's moving up to fret three of the A string, which is this C, the, the orange one. And then it's going back to fret zero of the A string, which is an A. This is us mapping out the relative positions, which would allow us then to map it out in some uh, scale other than C major. We can go play it in a G or something like that if we wanted to map out the positions, which would be six, uh, the six, the one, the six. And then the same pattern repeats then again. So that David played and it pleased the Lord. So if we map that out, then it's going to be something like this. We've got the open. I heard there was a secret chord that Now, if you play that along with like the song, then you'll get the timing of the song, which can help you basically with the timing of it. So one more time, if we start here, I'm gonna say, uh, I heard there was a secret chord. And now I'm over here. Uh, that David played and it pleased the Lord. And then we can go on to the next bit. And so I'm gonna to try to see two, two bits at a time here. So now I'm over here and we're gonna say, uh, we had that open A, but you, so now I'm on this F. Now notice that F is a little low because we can play that F chord basically this way, but we can also play it this way. So you might go to this F up top, right? This F right here, but I'm gonna map it out, but you don't really care for music. And now we're going back down to the C. Do ya? And then it goes to the G. You could also play it this way, right? So I could say, but, but instead of going here, we go to this F. You don't really. And then to this G or the open G, same note. Care for music. And then to the G again. And so then we can go over here and say the next two together is going to be, we're, so, so now we're basically on this G. Well, uh, it goes like this, the fourth to that F, F fourth, the fifth. And so once again, this F to that G could also be played here the fourth, the fifth, or the fourth, the fifth, to this open G right here. So this F is right here, an octave up here, here, and that G right there is equivalent to this G down here. So that's what I mean about different variations of playing it. Is, so if you wanted it to sound heavy, if someone was playing this heavy bass bit, like you can play it down here and mirror it and do something similar within the song that they can complement what you're listening to. That's what I mean by kind of like playing around with it as we, as we kind of pick it apart here. So then, so, so the minor fall, the major lift. So we were on uh, here, the open A, 
minor fall in the, and then back to the F major lift, which again you can play here. Major lift. And then we could say, okay, the next bit is going to be the baffle king composing hallelujah so we're losing a little bit of the flavor there because this is where we get that e major that's going into the a uh, minor but if you play this along with the song as you're listening to the song it'll fit in nicely and then of course we can convert these into uh the chords so note, once again, we're playing here. This is going to be the F. So the baffle, we're going up to the G. Baffle king composing. This is where it goes down to the E. So now we're dropping to the E. Posing, halle. And then we're going up to the open A here with this yellow up to uh, the open A. Now, again, you could play this F right here is also right here. So you could play this F and say that we're going to say this F, the, and go up to this G, this G right here, or the G below. Baffle King composing, that now we play that open E, or you can play the, the E right there. Composing, hallelujah. Now well, that's where we have the open A. There's also an A uh, right here. So just couple different ways we can basically play that within the same area if you know where those notes are again you can kind of play along with the song a few different ways and so then we're going to say into the chorus so now we had we left off on the open a Halle, and then we're going to go to the f hallelujah, and then it repeats that again so now we're going to say uh, Hallelujah Halle. Now we're switching to the C Lu -hoo -hoo. That goes to the G And then Ya Which basically brings us back to that C again So once again if we look at this chorus bit We're going we're gonna to be here We're on the open A So we're saying Hallelujah It goes to an F now that F could be played here, or it could be played here. There's the, the next F that we can play. So open A, hallelujah, hallelujah. So that goes back to the open A here. There's an A, there's an open A here. You also have an A down here. Hallelujah. And then we're gonna go back to the, oh, we have the open A, hallelujah. Luya, the F here. Luya, or here. Halle. And then we have the C. Hallelujah. So now we're on the C. Hoo, hoo. That goes to the G. Why is it going to the G? Because that's the one that leads back into the C. So now we feel like we're basically back in the key of C here. Then this thing, of course, repeats for the next the next verse so now we have the same kind of thing uh, so well so now we have well your faith was strong but you needed proof and then boom to the next one uh, you saw her bathing on the roof so I'm just alternating back and forth between the C and the A, and then we're going into uh, her beauty F, which can be played here or up here. In the moonlight over through you. That's going back to the C, and then it's just repeating a G to lead into the next line. So we're going to say... Uh, so now she tied you, I'm sorry, she, she uh, tied you to her kitchen, there's the F, chin, chair, now we're up to the G, and then we're going to say she broke, we're on the open A, 
your throne and she uh, cut your hair. So now we're on the F again. And then, and from your lips she drew, there's that open E, the hallelujah. So there's the open A. And then we go back into the chorus once again. So we have the open A, hallelujah, to the F, hallelujah, back to the open A. Now I'm over here, hallelujah, hallelujah, back to the C this time instead of the A, to the G up above it in yellow, who, yeah, which brings me back to the feeling that I'm in the key of C. And then again, we can repeat this again. I'll do this quickly because we're doing it again. And we're going to say, uh, well, maybe there's a God above for me. All I've ever learned from love. And, da -da 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 -da. and then we're going to say over here, we're going to say is how to shoot at someone who out drew ya back to the G dun, dun. and then over here but it's not a crime you'll hear tonight and then do, 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 do. and then it's not some pilgrim who claims to see the light no it's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah and then into the chorus here so like i say this is, might actually be more difficult than playing just the chords because you know the chords in open position but if if you apply this concept of learning the roots of them, then again, you can kind of practice the rhythm. It'll be and play it along with uh, the song. And we can use that same concept to move up as we move up the, the, the neck to try to play it in the next position up. And then once you get the roots of it, you can start to take apart the roots. You can say, okay, wait a second. I'm playing around the C and the A and start to maybe come up with your own little rhythm patterns, right? So like I can say, okay, look, I'm playing right here. I can play the, the root of this C and just the, the third is right under it. So maybe I kind of cheat. I just play like these two notes and I kind of try to funk, like funk out the song, right? I can play this and this, and then I can play the open A, which is an A to here, which is a power chord, right? So if I play from here to here, I'm playing basically the root of the C and then I'm going back to uh, an A. So you can play something like. So like. Heard there was a secret chord. David played me please alone. But you don't really care for music. Like this, the fourth, the fifth, that minor chord, major lift, baffle can compose. kind of messing around messing around with it you know just make it a little bit little bit different now you may or may not have liked that rendition of the song but the general idea is that we can take a basic tune and we can play with it we can adjust it we can add embellishments within it we can focus on specific parts of the song we can change the tempo we can change the rhythm 
uh, of the song and I would compare doing that with a song to the creative crafts of like artwork for example or say poetry where we're actually going to set boundaries we're going to set boundaries and that's good for the creativity because that allows us to know the range in which we can be creative the kind of changes that we can make there is still an infinite amount of changes we can make within those boundaries in other words what's the boundaries to be creative with a tune like hallelujah it's so that the song still sounds like hallelujah right so we could do we could do a lot of different things to the song but if we go too far out the boundaries it's not going to sound any more like hallelujah it might still be neat uh, and interesting but it will no longer sound like hallelujah and it might sound just bad but if we stay too far inside the boundaries it's going to sound just like the original which is good if that's what uh, you're going for but the idea is here that we can we can practice variations on that that's similar to poetry for example where you might have a set meter that you're going to be setting up and possibly a theme of the poem right and then you can go outside of that meter so poetry doesn't have to stay exactly within a, a meter structure but if you go way outside the meter it's going to sound like modern nonsense right it, it, it no longer has any structure you've lost it altogether uh, and if it's too metered then it sounds maybe too structured right and then the same thing with like painting or any kind of artwork right so if, if, we're, if we, we want to go outside the norm if i was looking at like a cartoon of something then do i want the cartoon image to look just like real life and I grew up learning, watching The Simpsons, which is kind of mirroring human beings, but they actually look quite different in a lot of ways to actual people, uh, which I thought to me is, a, is kind of an interesting variation. So how far away from the actual thing can you be and still be playing with it, but still be mirroring uh, the actual thing? I think you know that's one of the things that we can kind of play with. So as we, as we kind of move up the guitar will show how to play these different things in different positions up the guitar and then you'll see how that you can you can play the same thing in different positions once we learn the different positions along the guitar in terms of the notes and the chords then every time we switch chords you can switch chords to a different area on the guitar for example and all of that should fit together because you're still playing the same chords in essence but now you're mixing and matching and it'll sound uh, different also i might try to play this a couple different ways like maybe the, rend the the way i just did right there and then and then analyze it and say okay what what kind of embellishments am i doing as i add that just as common things that some people like i would do you know they're just common embellishments they're just you know i'm just playing notes that are in the key of uh c <laughs> so maybe I'll, I'll break that down and just say okay what what exactly are we are we playing when we're adjusting it uh so we'll look at that later <laughs> 